السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بتكلم حوام مزاج بدون نكح هتسوي يتبين تلاقيه So, I had to go to Thailand, huh? Before you know it? Okay. Okay, okay. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعض. I was informed, Juani, of a chapter that we didn't do سهوا منا, so we have to go back to that chapter, chapter number thirteen, and it is obviously connected with chapter number twelve. It's the chapter of the ring of the Nabi صلى الله عليه we did that in chapter number 13 is the chapter about him wearing his ring in the right hand wearing his ring in and on the right hand so we've established that the ittikhad of the khatim is from his sunnah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we've also established that he didn't do it for a tazayyum order to beautify himself like jewelry but he did it because he used it in order to stamp on his letters that he would write to the kings and to the leaders of that particular day after dealing with the description of his khatim the reason why he took the khatim sallallahu alaihi wasallam and imam al-tirmidhi in this next chapter talks about which hand did he actually wear the khatim in and he mentioned in giving his bad the tabweeb chapter the chapter of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wearing the ring in his right hand and imam al-tirmidhi was from the ulama the fuqaha al hadith and like his sheikh and his teacher al imam al bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi you can tell from the chapter title what is the opinion of the Imam? And Imam al Bukhari, his fiqh, is in the way that he names all of the chapters. If you want to know what his opinion is, whether the one who abandons salah is a kafir or not a kafir, then just look at the way he titles the chapter and you'll get that understanding. So Al Imam al Tirmidhi is a student and he took after him and he put it in his way, right here. Chapter of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wearing the khatam in his right hand. So we understand from that, we understand from that, the mafhum, the understanding of this chapter is he did not wear it in his left hand. And that was the opinion of Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi. That was the opinion of Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi. That the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam only wore it in his right hand. But in actuality, this is an issue of ikhtilaf between the ulama of al-Islam. Al-Imam, Shaykh al-Islam al-Thani, Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, has written a book called Zad al-Ma'ad. Zad al-Ma'ad. Very important book for the student of knowledge for the Muslim to have. In the very first chapter of that book, he deals with some of the details of the life of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, similar to the Shama'il, al muhammadiyah and Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim said that the ulama of Al-Islam, they brought a hadith that showed he put it in his right hand, and there are also a hadith that are authentic that he put it in his left hand, 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He put in his right hand and he put in his left hand. And Imam at tirmidhi in this chapter doesn't bring any hadith from Bukhari and Muslim saying that it's in the right hand. But there are a hadith that are in Sahih Muslim that says that the Prophet wore the ring in his left hand. Al Imam al Iraqi, Al Hafiz al Iraqi, he made some poetry about that. How the Nabi وسلم, had a ring in both hands. So he was of the opinion as well that the Nabi وسلم, wore his ring on this hand and he wore his ring on that hand. Both of them are authentic. Al Imam al Nawawi. Rahmatullahi alayhi, who was one of the leading scholars of the Shafi'i Madhab, also said the same thing. That in our Madhab, the Shafi'i Madhab, both of them are permissible because both of them are authentic. He said that there's ijma, consensus between the ulama of Islam, that it could be worn right and it could be worn on the left. He said the only issue of ikhtilaf is which of the two hands is the best hand. Which one is afdal? Some people say that the right is better because the ring, anything that is connected to al-fada'il, anything that's connected to what's good, what's clean, what's pure, should be on the right. So the ring is on the right. The other scholars said, no, no, no. The strongest hadith are the hadith in Sahih Muslim and they show us that it was on the left hand. So both of them are permissible. It shouldn't be mutashaddid for ha'ula'i, and we shouldn't be muta'asib for ula'ika. Just whatever is comfortable, what works for you, then it's no problem. Some of the ulama, especially the latter ulama, al-Albani and people like that, they said we should wear it on our right hand because the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa used to like a tayammun, doing things on his right in all of his affairs. Combing his hair, putting his shoes on, and everything that's pure and everything that is good. And another issue is being different from the mushrikeen. Being different from the mushrikeen. For some reason, Allahu alam, if a person is going to wear a ring, if a person is going to wear a watch, whether they are Muslim or not Muslim, if the Muslim never heard of these chapters, he never heard of these ahadith, a person gets a ring, you give him a ring, give him a watch, usually people are going to put it on their left hand. You don't know why. He doesn't know why. And then to change it from the left to the right, it actually feels awkward. And you have to get used to it, actually. So when those a hadith came telling the Muslims to be different from al Kitab, to be different from the Mushrikeen, since this is a practice that people have, why? Allahu Alam. They put it on their left, their rings, their watches. Those scholars said, this is an added reason why it should be on the right. So anyway, we have these ahadith and the bab is wasa. Al-Imam Malik, the Imam of Dar al-Hijra, the Imam of al madinah al-Nabawiyya, Al-Imam Malik, the Imam of the Madhab, he said it's better to have your ring on your left hand. And he disliked the ring being on the right hand. So if a person were to wear his ring on his left hand and someone on his right hand, they shouldn't make inkar on this one and that one shouldn't make inkar on them. Say this is munkar, this is innovation. It's not from the sunnah. If he has his ring on his right hand, you could tell that brother from the sunnah. La, kalla. It's not the case. It's not the situation. So concerning these hadith, there are few in this chapter. We try to get through uh, all of them because, as I said, there are quite a few. The first hadith, Ikhwati Filaz, the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib, he said that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to wear his ring on his right hand. And this particular hadith is weak, but the weakness in it is not that great. So Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi brought the same exact wording of the hadith, the same metin. He brought it twice. Hadith number 95, Ali ibn Abi Talib said he wore the ring on his right hand. And then after that, Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi brought hadith number 96, another hadith with a different chain of narration in which Ali ibn Abi Talib said the same thing that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wore it on his right hand. Those hadith together are acceptable and they're authentic. So it's been established that he wore the ring on his right hand. Uh, as I mentioned to you brothers in Sahih Muslim, the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Anas ibn Malik, 
He said that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to wear the ring in this finger. And he pointed to this finger. The one that's between the pinky and the middle finger. They call that finger the khansar. He used to wear it on that finger. That's what Anas ibn Malik said. Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. And that's in Sahih Muslim. That the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to wear the ring on this finger. And he used to be on his left hand. So the ulama of al-Islam concerning this hadith that's in Sahih Muslim, Anas ibn Malik, establishes in the left hand, and the other two established, he wore it in the right hand. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith we just mentioned from Sahih Muslim that's not in the Shama'il, that he wore on this finger is important. And that is, if a person is going to wear the ring, there's a way of wearing the ring where you'll get the optimum in terms of following the sunnah. And you'll see some of those things in this particular chapter. The man has been prohibited from wearing the ring on this thumb. There's a prohibition from wearing the ring on this finger that you point with the ishara. And there's a prohibition of putting it on the middle finger. He used to put it on the khinsar. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. As for the Muslimat al Tayyibat al Tahirat, al Mu'minat, al Qanitat, the women of Al Islam, then the woman can put the ring on any finger because there's no doubt as it relates to the woman that the ring is for a Tazayun. It is a Tazayun. She's wearing it for the sole purpose of beautification. Uh, if your car is outside and you're not parked in the right place, then they're clamping cars right now. They're clamping cars right now. So that's the issue. Both fingers have been established. The next hadith is a very important hadith. That is the hadith in which Abdullah ibn Jafar he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam used to wear his ring on the right finger. Abdullah ibn Jafir. He was asked a question. He was asked a question by someone who was mentioned in the chain of narration. Why was he wearing the ring on his right hand? He said that he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wearing the ring on his right hand. This particular hadith, as Imam al Bukhari said, Al Imam al Bukhari said, this hadith is the strongest hadith in this chapter about wearing the ring on the right hand. Just because he said it's the strongest hadith doesn't necessarily mean it's authentic. A hadith can be weak, it can be different levels of weakness, and it can be different levels of authenticity as well. But it goes to show that even to Al Imam al Bukhari, the wearing of the ring on the right hand is not as strong as the hadith in Sahih Muslim wearing the ring on the left hand. So he said that this is the strongest hadith in the chapter. But in the chain of narration is a man by the name of Abdurrahman ibn Nafi' and he has a problem. Abdurrahman ibn Rafi' and he has a problem. So Imam al-Bukhari, for those of you who have a book, maybe you can circle hadith number 97. He said it's the strongest hadith in the chapter and it has in the chain of narration a problem. Although Abdurrahman ibn Rafi is in the chain of narration, Al Imam al Tirmidhi is going to bring a hadith that supports it. Just like the two hadith, the same hadith with Ali, Abi, Ali ibn Abi Talib, but coming from two chains of narration and the weakness is not that great, so they strengthen. So let there be no doubt. Wearing the ring on the right hand is Thabit. From the authentic sunnah of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. Hadith number 98, Al Imam Al Tirmidhi said, he was told by his Sheikh Yahya ibn Musa, who said that Abdullah ibn Numair, he said that he was told by Ibrahim ibn Al Fadl that Abdullah ibn Muhammad ibn Aqil, and the authority of Abdullah ibn Jafar, who said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, used to wear the ring in his right hand. This hadith is a problem.
Because in the chain narration, the narrator who is matruk, matruk. And that's a big issue. He has been left, he has been abandoned, and narration shouldn't be taken from him. According to Imam al-Bukhari, and Imam al-Nasai, Abu Hatim al-Razi, they said that this hadith is munkar al-hadith. Munkar al-hadith. Munkar. Why do they say munkar? Because in the chain of narration is a person who has a serious problem saying that it was in the right hand and then those people were stronger than him in narration saying that it was in the left hand. So this hadith should be abandoned. It doesn't strengthen itself and it doesn't strengthen anything else because the shiddat al-da'af, because the weakness is serious. After that, hadith number 99, and it's already been established. So even if you take that hadith out of the equation, it still doesn't necessarily harm the reality that we're in the ring on the right hand is from the Sunnah and Nabawiyah. And Imam al Tirmidhi brought the statement that Jabir ibn Abdullahi, radiallahu anhu, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wore his ring on his right hand. And again, we have this individual who's in the chain of narration, Abdullah ibn Maymun, and he also is weak. And this hadith is really weak. Da'if jiddan. So really what we're dealing with right now is just what's the ruling of the hadith? Because although these hadith are weak, very weak, still, as we establish, we already have three or four hadith in the chapter that show that it is authentic. Hadith number 100, hadith number 100 is the hadith in which Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, he said, that Muhammad ibn Humayd al-Razi, he said, that Jarir told him, that Muhammad ibn Ishaq said that al sult ibn Abdullah said that Abdullah ibn Abbas, he used to wear his ring in his right hand and it was no doubt about that. And he would just say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do the same thing. This hadith has a number of issues. We already dealt with Muhammad ibn Ishaq, tremendous scholar in al-Islam when it comes to history and the Maghazi, ibn Ishaq, Muhammad ibn Ishaq. He is the sheikh and the teacher of Ibn Hisham, who also wrote a book that is uh, one of the best books in history. So although he was an imam, in history, he was a mu'arrakh, anytime he makes the an'an, anytime he said, I'm um, the authority, and he doesn't say, I was told by, I heard. If he does that, then there's the fear of tadlis. We have to go and we have to check it out. Not only is that a problem, but the one who he said, this thing came from his authority, he also has an issue. That's Salt ibn Abdullah. So hadith number 100 as well is problematic. But now we come to the hadith 101, which is in Sahih Muslim. And Imam Muslim also collected this particular hadith. Al-Imam Muslim. And that is that Al-Imam al-Tirmidhi said that his teacher and his Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abi Umar, he said that he was told by Sufyan on the authority of Ayyub ibn Musa, that Nafi said that Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. Ibn Umar said that the Prophet Sallallahu took a ring and was made out of silver. And that ring that was made out of silver, he took it and he turned it around towards his palm. The part of the ring that had, as we mentioned before, a khatam is something that has a rock and then it has a metal. If a person has an iron band, a total, complete iron band, it's not a khatam, and the Prophet didn't wear that. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the khatam is the thing that has its band, and it has some type of stone that is different from the band, whatever the stone happens to be. So in this particular narration that's been collected by Al-Imam Muslim, Rahmatullahi alayhi, Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with both of them, said that the Prophet took a ring, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that was made out of silver. That ring that he had, he faced it and caused it to turn towards his hand. And on the face was Muhammad Rasul Allah. Muhammad Rasul Allah. And then the Prophet Sallallahu prohibited the community. And he said to them, no one should take a ring similar to my ring. Where it says Muhammad Rasul Allah. And then at the end of this narration, the companion Ibn Umar, he said that this was the ring that fell off and fell out of the hand of Mu'ayqib in the well of Aris. And we dealt with that before. 
by doing the khilaf of Abu Bakr. He took the ring from the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then he gave it to Umar. Umar had the ring, and then he gave it to Uthman. Uthman had the ring. One narration said, Uthman dropped the ring inside of the well. This hadith, Sahih Muslim said, that Mu'ayqib dropped the ring in the well. So who dropped the ring in the well? Who dropped the ring? Was it Mu'ayqib or was it, or was it Uthman? Which one of them? And then we consider this to be a hadith where there's a tadaqat, there is a conflict and a contradiction between the two hadith. So we're going to reject the sunnah. Do any of you people remember how do we make the jama'at? Tfadl. Good job, Akhi. Some of the ulama, they give different reasons, possibility, the hadith, the chain of narration that comes. We look at it, we say, that's authentic. We say, khalas, we go with the flow. The scholars gave different ones. Maybe Mu'iqib was giving the ring to Uthman. When Uthman took the ring, it dropped. So now the narrator of the hadith says, Uthman dropped the ring. The next one says, Mu'iqib dropped the ring. Whatever the case happens to be, that's a possibility and the other possibilities. And our iman billahi, wa malaikatihi, wa kutubihi, wa rasulihi, wa al akhir, wa iman bil qadr, khayrihi wa sharrihi, it is not hinging upon these types of issues. This is a test for the individual. He loves the sunnah, he loves the hadith. He has some insight into the hadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He studied something about the metan, the actual word. He studied the words, what was said, the metan. He also has some background and some knowledge about the isnad. And he knows that the isnad is from the khasais of al-Islam. It is an issue that only this religion has. The Quran was protected with the isnad. This Quran just didn't pop up like that. But those companions took it from the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then they gave it to the tabi'een and then they gave it to the atba' at tabi'een and then they gave and they gave and they gave and they gave until we have right now people who can say ma qira'a of the Quran goes all the way back to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we know the recitations and we know the ayat that are rejected. There are some recitations that we reject is an ayat Allah Ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, Ya ayyul ladheena amanu, idha darabtum fi sabili lahi fatabayyanu. Oh, you believe. If you travel through the earth and there are a group of people that you come to them, non-Muslims, and you have to deal with them, fatabayyanu, from bayan, fatabayyanu. That's what's in our Quran, that's what's in our Mus'haf, right now, right now. There's another recitation that says, فَتَثَبَّتُوا فَتَثَبَّتُوا Be sure. This word is التَّثَبُّتْ This one is التَّبَيُّنْ So the scholars judged and ruled that that recitation is شَاذَ شَاذ is irregular. Why? Because people in the chain of narration that brought that ayat and that recitation to us. So anyway, the point is the one who has some background and he studied he's an individual who says مُوَيْقِيب Uthman, plausible explanation. Alhamdulillah, no problem. I know ilm al-hadith and I know this religion was saved by this. Allah saved this religion by this ilm al-hadith and this asani. It doesn't have a problem. But now if the hadith said, I'm going to ask you guys this question now. If the two hadith said, over here the hadith said that Uthman dropped it in the well. Said Uthman dropped it in the well. And then the other hadith, the other hadith, it said that Al Hassan al Basri dropped the ring in his well, in the well. Now, what are we going to do with that situation? What are we going to do with that situation? Are we going to say that the scholars, one hadith said Hassan al Basri dropped it in the well, the other one said Uthman ibn Affan dropped it in the well. Someone came and tried to harmonize it and said maybe Hassan al Basri was giving the thing to Uthman. What are we going to say? We're going to say, no, Hassan al-Basri didn't meet Uthman. So that hadith is not authentic. How did Hassan al-Basri ever get his hand on the ring of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So we just don't believe in the 
the Jama, we just don't believe any and everything that's mentioned. Sometimes the explanation that's given is not plausible. So we, we leave it. It's not, it doesn't make sense. It can't be. Historically, it's incorrect. The point is, Ikhwani, our religion is based on knowledge. So if you don't know, go and learn. And don't be of the people who reject these things and you're ignorant. Don't be of those people. That's the point. So whether it was him or whether it was that one, may Allah be pleased with him, really it is irrelevant because it's been established. Anyway, now, inshallah, azawajal, we go to hadith number 102 and we show that uh, both of these issues have been established. So the actual sunnah of Rasulullah sallam, is to take the ring if it has something on it and to turn it towards the front. And that's another proof and another indication that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam to sleep in kathira, he did not wear the ring for beautification. Because if he was wearing it for beautification, he would have had it on the outside so people can see. But it wasn't for that. It was for reason. So if someone is going to take a ring, those ulama said, the exact thing, if he's a judge, if he's an imam, if he's someone who's signing papers, then this is what the sunnah was. And then the issue, it is wasa. Because some of the companions came after that and they wore rings for beautification, as you're going to see, inshallah. But Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he didn't wear it for beautification, but some of the companions did, and that's authentically established. Hadith number 102, and Imam al-Bukhari and Imam al-Tirmidhi said that his sheikh Qutayb ibn Sa'id was told, and he said that his sheikh Hatim ibn Ismail said on the authority of Jafar ibn Muhammad and his father, his father Muhammad, he said that al-Hasan and Hussein, they used to wear rings in their left hands. They used to wear rings in their left hands. So the Imam al-Tirmidhi brought that hadith, and the hadith is not authentic. It's not authentic. But at least goes to show that Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi is being fair, he's being just, and he showed there's another side to the story, although he himself didn't bring the strongest hadith, but over here with the one that's in Sahih Muslim, in which he had the gold ring on or the silver ring, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he put it, in, put it in towards his palm. Hadith number 105, we'll just go to the rawi of the hadith, and he's Anas ibn Umanik, the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, used to wear his ring in his right hand, establishing the same thing that went before this. Last hadith, last hadith. Al-Imam al-Tirmidhi said that his sheikh, Muhammad ibn Ubaidillah al-Muharabi, he said that his sheikh told him that Abdullah or Abdul Aziz ibn Ubay Hazm said on the authority of Musa ibn Uqba that Nafi' on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with both of them, said that the Nabi of Islam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Rasulullah, he took a ring that was made out of gold. And then he took that ring that was made out of gold and he wore it in his right hand. After he did that and the people saw him, they all took rings out of gold. All of them took rings made out of gold. And then the Prophet wasallam, after that took the ring off and he threw it down. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La al-busuhu abada. I will never wear this ring again. And then the people took their rings off that were made out of gold and they threw their rings down as well. Which goes to show the ittiba and the ittisam that the companions had for the Nabi and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bi majaratan ittakhada khatimin min dhahab Just because he took a ring from gold, they saw it, they did it. He wore it and they wore it. At a time when it was permissible, that was allowed, and then it was abrogated. It became mansukh, and Allah didn't allow it. Because Allah makes halal what he wants to make halal, when he wants to make it halal, how he wants to make it halal, and whoever he wants to make it halal, he may allow it for some people and not allow it for other people. Allow it for the men and not allow it for the women. Allow it for Quraysh and not allow it for other than the Quraysh. Allow it for the emir and not allow it for other people. Allah, he makes those types of decisions and the people who are believers say we hear and we obey. So wearing the golden ring is not permissible. He stood up before the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, verily, these two things are haram on the men in my community. And in one hand he had silk 
and in the other hand he had gold. Whereas for the Muslim woman, she can wear gold. She can wear gold. She can wear a gold ring, gold necklace, wear gold whatever she wants to wear because it's permissible for her and it's halal haram for the men. And he said anyone who wears it in the dunya, they won't be able to wear it yomu qiyama. They won't be able to wear it yomu qiyama. So that's the chapter, Khwani. And there is the ijma of the ulama of Islam that again, that the, as Al Imam and Noah, we said, the ring of the man is right here, and the ring of the woman could be on any finger, on any hand, and it could be made out of gold or other than that. So that is the issue that we skipped. And Afwan, Ma Ansana illa shaytan al rajim, when I would be let. So that's the chapter of the Tukhattum and the, the hand of the Tukhattum. So we'll go back, inshallah, as we jump to the chapter that we had left off from, which was what chapter? We did that though, right? The, um, the Imama of the Nabi of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, right? Okay, so in this chapter, Khwani, the Bab al Akhir, the last chapter, do you brothers have any questions concerning that? Another issue is about the watch. Obviously, our Nabi and our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam didn't wear a watch. Watches were not present during this time. So if a person wants to wear a watch, there's benefit in wearing the watch. There are a lot of fawaid and masalih in wearing the watch, most important of which is keeping on top of the time of the salah. No problem. So which ring should he wear it on? Scholars of Islam got ikhtilaf in this based upon the ikhtilaf of the ring. There are those scholars who said the ring of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was worn on the right hand because the right is something of virtues. But another scholar said, no, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, he was of the opinion that your watch should be worn on your left hand. And Al-Bani said, she on your right hand. And other than them said this, and other than them said that. Your knee in these types of issues, inshallah, is what's going to tip the scales. You want to be different from the mushrikeen, the Prophet used to love, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tayammun, the right in all of his affairs, and that is general. In all of his affairs, all of his affairs that were clean, that were virtuous, the right hand took precedence. As for the affairs that were dirty, like cleaning oneself after the call of nature, like blowing your nose, like things like that, going into the toilet, Akramakumullah going outside of the masjid into the dunya. All of that is with the left, the left, the left. What's being mentioned in the Quran about the Ashab al Shimal and so forth and so on is an indication that the right has more virtue. But it's an issue of ikhtilaf. And this thing about the watch wasn't there during the time of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there's no reason <coughs> for anybody to be mutashaddid. Muta'asab. Al-Mas'ala fiha is really why. Okay, Akhwani, you guys have any questions? Fadda Akhi Sharif, Ashrafakumullah. Starting wearing platinum rings, platinum is one of those really, really expensive metals. Wearing a diamond ring and issues like this. Some of the ulama said that they are permissible because of the general rule, what is known as al baraatu al-asliyah. al baraatu al-asliyah is everything is halal until the delil comes and makes it haram. So the delil came and said, you can't wear hadid, you can't wear ring of iron. We dealt with that. The delil came, showed, you can't wear a dhahab, gold, you can't wear that. So where is the delil to say that a platinum ring can't be worn? Where is the delil? They didn't have platinum during that time. And Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ النَّسِيَّةِ Your Lord was not forgetful. 
Allah knew way back then when he sent the Prophet over 1300 years ago, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that there was going to be a metal that was expensive that was called platinum. And Allah mentioned in the Quran, the ayat of the Quran, many ayat, like the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, من ذا الذي يحرم زينة الله التي أخرج من الطيبات من ذا الذي يحرم زينة الله الذي أخرج لعباده من الطيبات قل من حرم زينة الله التي أخرج لعباده من الطيبات قل هي للذين آمنوا في الحياة الدنيا خالصة يوم القيامة Who is that that has the nerve to make the pure things and the good things that Allah has made halal, he comes and makes it haram. Say that these things are for the believers in the dunya and they'll be only for them in the hereafter. So don't be like Quraysh. Quraysh would say, what's in the stomach of this pregnant she-camel is for the men and not for the women. If it comes out like that, then we both share. And they were saying things like that, making what was halal, haram, haram, halal. Amnahum shuraka, sharu'nahum min ad-dini ma lam ya'zim bihi Allah. Do they have partners who make sharia, legislation? Allah didn't make it legislation. So those other scholars said, what is the wisdom and what is the illa? What is the hikmah? Why did Allah Azza make gold haram? One of the reasons is because of kibr. One of the reasons is because it's waste. So qiyas, qiyasin on that. If gold is haram, if gold is haram, then platinum and bab and ola is even more haram. But then the person can say, how can we know for sure what's the illa? So it's better to follow the principle, da'ma yuribuka ila ma la yuribuka. Leave what you doubt for what you don't doubt. Because in this issue, there is some tanazur between the ulama. And the safe position that is ahwat, ahfad, safer for you, just avoid the issue altogether. And those people who said that is something that's haram, the salaf, the companions after that, they didn't have those expensive rings from other metals. Their rings were from silver, 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 and that's it. Hey, tfaddal. Any more questions, ikhwani? Mindukum Shay. Okay, what time is Salat al Isha? What time is the Adhan? Quarter past. Okay, we're going to stop here, inshallah. I have to go with. Uh, is Abu Zay here? We're going to stop right here, inshallah. Take a trip with Abba, with Abi Zayd. Akramukum Allah, wa Zadakum Allahu, Khaira, wa Husna, wa Tiban. Hava. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. so now we're caught up and we didn't leave any chapter out, any chapter out. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. I was I was here already so and I didn't even look at I didn't even look at my phone. Sorry about that.